You know what? I think today we should talk about the PlayStation 3. Sony's system was much maligned at launch, but fast became a serious competitor to Microsoft's Xbox 360. The PlayStation 3 introduced players to a number of exciting new features, including the wireless six-axis controller, high-definition graphics, and perhaps most importantly, free online multiplayer. But five years after the system was officially discontinued, I'm here to answer one simple question. Is anyone still playing PlayStation 3 games online in 2021? Hello, I'm Liam from Push Square, and for the past week or so, I've been playing through a stack of PlayStation 3 titles to find out if they still have active online communities. Why? Oh. In order to make this video as informative as possible, I tested all of these games out using two parameters. For starters, if I was able to find an online game that contained one or more players, I would deem the test to be a success. The game has someone playing it online. It is technically active. Secondly, I only played these games during the times that you can see on screen right now. If I could find no one playing a game during any of these times, I would simply keep trying until I'd played the game in all time slots, and if I found no one playing the game online, I would deem it to be completely dead. The most important thing to note, however, before I start this video, is that pretty much every single Sony first-party game is no longer playable online on the PlayStation 3. That means I wasn't able to play Little Big Planet, Resistance, Killzone, Mod Nation Races, or MAG. Believe me, if I could have played MAG, or PlayStation Home for that matter, I would have. That means that every game I've played in this video has been a third party release. Anyway, enough of that. Let's see who's still playing PlayStation 3 games online in 2021. All right, so the first game I played was Battlefield Bad Company 2 for some reason. I remember really enjoying this game back when it was first released in 2010? That can't be right. I'm not that old, am I? Anyway, no one really talks about this 11-year-old first-person shooter anymore, so I figured this whole endeavour was going to be a total bust. Turns out it kind of wasn't. I tried the game out for the first time on a Wednesday afternoon at 3pm GMT. Team Deathmatch was a no-go, the game just dumped me in an empty map by myself, which was super lonely and scary because I was left with nothing but my own thoughts, but I had more luck on the Rush and Conquest playlist. Look! one other person. I know these modes were meant to accommodate 50 players or whatever, but listen, finding one person playing online on a Wednesday afternoon 11 years after the game originally launched is a win in my eyes. I played for 20 minutes and during that time, five more people joined the match. Pretty amazing, really. Almost as amazing as how often I was able to kill this player. Your max level. How am I winning every firefight? Unconvinced that Bad Company 2 could still be so popular in 2021, I also tried to join a game at 8am GMT and was shocked to find an 8 player match instantly. Remarkable, I guess folks really miss playing this game, huh? Moving on, let's try something a bit more popular. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, one of the biggest games to ever launch on the PlayStation 3. I played this for hundreds of hours on the X, but I mean, uh, please don't take away my PS5. I promise it was a lapse in judgment that was never repeated. Like Bad Company 2, I played this on a Wednesday afternoon between 3 to 5 p.m. GMT. Wow, it's nostalgic to be back on this menu. Look how simple things were back before battle passes and constant updates. Okay, let's try searching for a game. Oh, that's a good sign. Well, let's try Team Deathmatch, why not? Okay, no games found. Wait, hold on, this is a full lobby. 12 players on a Wednesday afternoon. Wild. I tried this multiple times and managed to play four games, all of which had full lobbies that connected in less than 10 seconds. Oh my god, I'm bad at this game. The same couldn't be said, unfortunately, for the game's other playlists. Most were completely dead, and although I was matched with one other player while waiting in some cases, no one else ever joined, and after a minute or two, the other player would leave. Oh, what's the matter, bud? Are you not spending hours of your life attempting to see who's playing PlayStation 3 games online? 
Okay, fair enough. Bye. All right, let's move on. Call of Duty Black Ops, the next installment following Modern Warfare 2 and the last Call of Duty game I bought on PlayStation 3. Let's see, who's playing? Well, this looks promising. Oh cool, Black Ops not only tells you how many people are online, it even tells you how many people are currently in a specific playlist, and from the looks of it, most people are playing Team Deathmatch. Go figure. Between 3 and 5pm GMT, I was able to find a full lobby of Team Deathmatch with no issues, multiple times throughout my testing. It was the same for Search and Destroy, which is still the best Call of Duty multiplayer mode, don't at me, despite having fewer players compared to Team Deathmatch. For Domination, I had to wait a few minutes for the lobby to fill up, but we're talking one to two minutes at most. Hardly a long wait for an 11 year old game that's had 10 sequels since. Jumping back on at 8am GMT, yeah the game was a little quieter, it was 8 in the morning, who's playing, but still perfectly playable as long as you were only looking to play a few rounds of Team Deathmatch. Also, the original Black Ops rules? I had so much fun playing this again. Sadly, Gun Game was completely dead. So what's the point? I'll be snapping my disc as soon as this video ends. All right, can't forget about zombies. Is anyone still playing zombies at 8 a.m. on a Thursday morning? The answer, weirdly, is yes. I found someone pretty much instantly. Huh, all right, well, we're bad at zombies. So let's just jump back into the lobby here and oh, we have a full party now. So basically, even at eight in the morning, you can find a full party playing the default zombies map without any issues. If you're looking for players on the game's other maps though, you're kind of out of luck. So don't rush to buy the DLC, I guess. Like in multiplayer, only one level can be considered active at this point in time. Unless you've got friends, of course. Lucky. So I was really hoping to play Mod Nation Races as part of this video, but as I mentioned at the start, Sony has all but abandoned their multiplayer servers on the PlayStation 3. Still, I wanted to play some kind of kart racing game online. It turns out the only thing I own that sort of resembles that is F1 Superstars. Look, I know nothing about this game. I don't even know how or why I own it. What is this? What's going on here? We gave it a 5 out of 10 upon release in 2012, so I'm sure its servers must be bustling nine years later, right? Surprise! I couldn't find a single person playing this game. And believe me, I tried. I sat in a lobby for every single one of the game's multiple modes for 20 minutes at a time within all three of the time brackets I designated for this test. Why did I do this? I have no idea, but not a single person showed up. I know. Shocking. Anyway, enough of this. Let's go back to killing people without remorse. Battlefield 1943 was a digital-only, multiplayer-only entry in the Battlefield series that took place during the Pacific campaign of World War II, and served as sort of a semi-sequel slash spin-off to the highly regarded Battlefield 1942. Again, I remember loving this when it first came out. Let's see if anyone is still playing in 2021 at 8 in the morning. Surely not. Oh. Oh no, I joined a game straight away. Well, surely it's just going to be one person like in Bad Company 2. Nope, that's a pretty full lobby. So here's what happened. I joined a game with seven other people and played for about 35 minutes. In that time, the lobby peaked at 14 players, but for a good half an hour, there were 12 people consistently playing the game alongside me. Sure, the game was designed for, I think, 24 players, but even at half capacity, Battlefield 1943 is still perfectly playable and a ton of fun. I forgot just how light-hearted and simple this game felt. It's all about capturing control points and shooting the enemy team, and that's it. I love it. All right, enough of this nonsense. Let's try out one of these planes. It's been literally years. Oh, wait, no, that's not normal. That's not how planes, that's not how they're meant to go. Okay. All right, lesson learned, won't be doing that again. So it's fair to say that this game still has a pretty passionate player base and I can totally see why. I had a load of fun playing this. Goodbye, my love. On to the next game. All right, let's move on to something a little bit different. Following a five year absence, SSX made its HD console debut with the confusingly titled SSX, a sort of soft reboot that focused on shredding down deadly mountain ranges. I have a lot of fond memories playing this game and I won't lie, I was excited to jump back in after nine long years apart. All right, let's see if I've still got the moves. How do I? Nope, I've completely forgotten the controls. Excellent. Okay, wait, wait a minute. Here we go. Oh my god, this game still absolutely slaps. 
Anyway, more importantly, is anyone playing online? Well, no, is the short answer to that question. So playing online in SSX was a little bit odd. The game launched without any kind of traditional multiplayer modes. Instead, players would compete against one another in timed tournaments, racing and tricking against ghosts of other players. At the end of a few hours, days or weeks, the tournament would end and you'd be provided with an upgrade currency based on your best performance during the event. A few months after launch, developer EA Vancouver released a real-time multiplayer mode called 321 Go based on fan feedback. At the time, the game's online portion was well populated, providing a healthy mix of traditional head-to-head -head modes alongside those time-bracketed tournaments. It was great, but in 2021, yeah, nah, total bust. For starters, it took me 15 minutes to find any of the game's multiplayer modes because the UI in SSX is hot garbage. Why is this confusing? Am I an idiot? No one answer that. Once I managed to work out how to access a level, it became apparent pretty quickly that no one is playing this game anymore. I found no one playing the game's 3-2-1 go events during any of the times I tested. I waited in this helicopter for 30 minutes on six separate occasions to no avail. Her arms must be knackered. Elsewhere, the game's once bustling time-based events are also pretty much dead. Of the three events available, only one other player had competed within them. Sure, someone is still playing, but I mean, look, the joy of this game was competing against hundreds of people to come out on top. This just feels really sad. Anyway, a year, make another SSX game. What are you playing at? Come on now. Grand Theft Auto 4 was one of the biggest games of the HD generation. An incredible achievement that pushed the series forward in regards to environmental fidelity, world complexity, and engaging narratives. It also featured an in-depth multiplayer suite, allowing you and up to 16 random strangers to cause chaos across Liberty City. 13 years later, is anyone still playing GTA 4? Let's find out! This loading screen is super nostalgic. My life was so simple back then. Okay, hilariously, it's been so long since I last played this game that my save file doesn't support trophies. Trophies were added to the game six months after it launched. Amazing. Wow, this game is way blurrier than I remember. Still, it has a certain unspeakable quality that persists to this day. GTA 4 still feels more next-gen to me than GTA 5, and I can't really explain why. Is it because I was 16 when it came out? Eh, probably. Who cares? Let me just pull out my Nokia 3310 here and try playing some games online. At 4pm GMT, I was able to join a free roam game without any issues. There were consistently four to five people playing. Every time someone left, a different player would join pretty much immediately. Oh, what? Why are you trying to kick me? I literally just joined. I'll teach you a lesson for trying to get me out of this free roam game in GTA 4. Oh my god, they have an RPG. Oh, okay. Well, that didn't do anything. When I left and rejoined, I was able to find a completely separate free roam instance, which was cool, but also, why aren't these games merged together? I guess they just didn't have the technology back then. In terms of dedicated multiplayer playlists, I found one person playing deathmatch and two people playing racing. Hardly thriving, but still perfectly alive. Rockstar is shutting down GTA 5's PlayStation 3 servers in December 2021. They shut down Max Payne 3 a week before I started recording this video, which I'm very upset about. Weirdly, they fail to mention if GTA 4's servers will also be getting the axe in a few months' time, so if you're keen to experience this, well, now's the time to do so, I guess. Also, I was going to test out GTA Online, but I haven't played the PS3 version of GTA 5 since that game launched in 2013. Personally, I'm terrified of how many patches it'll need to become playable. Have you patched a game on PlayStation 3 lately? I have. It's awful. You have to wait for it to patch. You can't do other stuff while it's happening. How did we live like this? Let's try a total wild card because I like to live chaotically. How about Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, the first Assassin's Creed game to feature an online multiplayer mode, as was the style at the time. Assassin's Creed's multiplayer mode was basically a proto version of a Monos, tasking players with hunting down rivals hidden among crowds of NPCs. It ruled. Okay, let's see. It's 4 p.m. GMT. Is anyone playing? Searching for other Abstergo agents. 
How cool are robot is keeping me updated. Searching for a program session. Uh-huh. Well, this isn't annoying or anything. Searching for a program session. All right, I get it. Wait, did I ever even play this version? I'm level one. Okay, it's been half an hour. This isn't working. Lesson learned. Let's jump ahead a bit and try Assassin's Creed 3 instead. I did not like this game at the time, so this should be fun. Wait, did I not play this version either? Which version did I play? Revelations? Oh, I lost my disc for that a long time ago. This'll just have to do. Looking for game sessions. Oh great, the robot is back. Looking for game sessions. Yes, I understand. Looking for game sessions. Shut up! Starting to get the feeling no one is playing Assassin's Creed 3 either. Okay, what about this wolf pack mode? This seems to be something a bit different to the standard playlist. Well, that answers that. I tried this out during all three time brackets and the result was always the same. No secret stabby times for Liam, just an endlessly repeating robot voice. Oh well, could be worse. All right, let's try a racing game. Something fun, something arcadey. Oh, how about Need for Speed Hot Pursuit? Not only is it a personal favorite, but it's also a bit of a fun one to try, seeing as it recently got a re-release on the PlayStation 4. Surely that means folks have moved on to the next gen version, right? Whoa, maybe don't spin the menu like that. What are you doing? Why is this a thin? Well, the multiplayer options are a little confusing. Not only are there multiple game modes available, there are also different car classes to choose from per mode. Now this means I have to choose a multiplayer mode, then choose a car class, then wait 15 to 20 minutes to see if anyone joins. Most other games on this list have had a quick play option that just matches you with an available game immediately regardless of mode, so this kind of makes finding someone a little tricky. Well, looks like no one is playing. I have a finite amount of time left on this earth and I just wasted a hefty chunk of it waiting in Need for Speed Hot Pursuit multiplayer lobbies. Great. I'm sure I won't regret that decision on my deathbed. I wasn't even doing anything else. I was just staring at the screen. What's wrong with me? Okay, well, how about the next installment in the Need for Speed series by Burnout developer Criterion 2012's Most Wanted? I've never actually played this game and I don't know why I own it. Cool. Let's give it a try. All right, I have to play a bit of the tutorial before I move on, and wait a minute, is this a spiritual successor to Burnout Paradise? This feels amazing in the hands, and it looks good too, considering it's running at 720p. Huh, how did I miss this? All right, I can access multiplayer now, not feeling too hopeful, to be honest. I'm playing this at eight in the morning again, after all. Hmm, not looking good. Oh, well, it did find someone, but then it kicked me out the lobby because I didn't have a DLC pack. Cool. Oh, wait, hold on. I think it's just matched me with someone. Multiple people. So it turns out the multiplayer in Most Wanted is super fun. It just randomly provides different activities for you to complete. A race, who can do the biggest jump, who can go past a speed camera the fastest. As I was playing, multiple people joined our lobby and I just had an absolute blast racing around in this cool open world city. Out of everything I played for this video, Most Wanted felt the most playable, if that makes sense. There are enough people online to fill a lobby in such a way that it doesn't feel like you're playing a lesser experience compared to if you played the game upon its original launch. I think, I think I'm going to keep playing this after the video. This is, this is great. How about this? Resident Evil 5, the first mainline entry in the series to feature online co-op. The game has been re-released on multiple different systems, so surely no one is still playing the- Oh no, no I found a game immediately. So here's how this works. When you start a single player game, Resident Evil 5 gives you the option of allowing randomers on the internet to just join your game at any point. It turns out that lots of people are not only still playing Resident Evil 5, but they've kept this option turned on. I joined four separate games at 8.30 on a Friday morning, and not a single person rejected my request. West. The first Chris I joined had unlimited ammo for his grenade launcher that froze enemies and he gifted me a golden egg. Thank you, kind stranger. This is truly the greatest gift I've ever received. It never runs out. I can eat so many eggs. The last game on our list is a title that holds a very special place in my heart. Although I've always been a PlayStation player, I spent a lot of my teenage years playing multiplayer games on PC, and no game occupied my time more than Valve's Team Fortress 2. 
I played TF2 for thousands of hours on PC back in the day. It remains my favourite multiplayer game of all time. So when I started writing this video, I had a sick and twisted idea. Team Fortress 2 was available on the PlayStation 3 as part of the Orange Box, a collection of Valve's classic PC games that launched in 2007. Now the console version of TF2 is infamously weird, whereas the PC version received hundreds of updates in the years after launch, stuffing the game full of brand new weapons, maps and various other bits of content, the PlayStation 3 version never received a single update. Well, maybe one or two bug squashing patches, but you get my point. The PlayStation 3 version is undeniably a lesser version of the game. Surely no one is still playing. Okay, let's try this out. The servers are offline. No, I refuse to believe that the TF2 servers are offline. I did not waste four hours of my life sitting in Need for Speed Hot Pursuit multiplayer lobbies for Team Fortress 2 to be offline. Blah. Ah, take that, creaky, dusty EA servers that are undoubtedly located in some unlit basement. Oh my god, somebody's playing. So at 9am on a Friday morning, I found one server with one player. The game itself can't actually start unless there are four players in a lobby, and even after 20 minutes of just messing around, no one else joined the game. But when I returned at 11pm that same day, I was able to find a single server containing seven players. Eight people are more than enough players to experience TF2 the way it was meant to be played, and viewer, let me tell you, I had the time of my life playing TF2 on PlayStation 3. Sure, I was hopeless at it, it has been a while after all, but I had such a blast capturing the intelligence, defending some control points, and building a beloved sentry. It's fascinating that folks are keeping this multiplayer mode alive 14 years after launch, but honestly, I can understand why. What a game. What a wonderful, wonderful game. Also, this same disc has Half-Life 2 and Portal on it. The orange box was a truly fantastic release. So there we have it, our video about who's playing PlayStation 3 games online in 2021. Are you still playing PlayStation 3 games online? Let me know in the comments below. In fact, let me know what games you're playing online because I'd love to know. Thank you so much for watching, I do always appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and make sure to subscribe to Pushquare for everything PlayStation. I'll be back soon and in the meantime, I'll probably be playing Need for Speed Most Wanted. Bye!